This week on EV Rider, we're checking out a brand new electric motorcycle company. You know, new electric motorcycles are awesome, but what about converting the classics like we're starting to see in the automotive industry? For example, you might remember I brought you the story of an electric beetle not long ago. Well, that's starting to take shape in the motorcycle world as well. You're looking at the very first running Shandoka. EV Rider is the first media outlet anywhere in the world to bring you a test ride. EV Rider caught up with Shandoka Motorcycles founder Ernest Ike to find out what his EV retrofit kits for gas bikes are all about. Shandoka is a company that builds uh, adapter systems to make it easy to convert bikes from gas to electric. So this uh, was originally a 1983 Yamaha Maxim 400 XS. So it was a 400 cc engine. Uh, the real trick to this bike is that it's got a structural engine, so there's no frame that goes beneath the engine itself. That lets us use our patented adapter to convert the bike to electricity. It maintains the structural integrity of the bike, but gives you plenty of freedom for where to put components and how much battery space you've got in. And then we use a hub motor to really maximize how much space is there for the power systems. It's rated as a 15 kilowatt continuous and looking at the uh, software, it peaks around 2,600, 26,000 watts. So uh, equivalent of about 32 to 35 horsepower. So inside of our adapter, we have a center compartment that holds the batteries. This is our Sumo adapter, which has got enough space for about 11, point, about 11 kilowatt hours of battery with today's current technology. And then each of the side compartments is there for additional batteries, or in this case, we put the charger on board. So in the side compartment, we have a Thunderstruck TM2500 charger. Uh, it can, right now it's set up for just level one, plug it right into the wall but we can go up to about 30 amps at 200 volts with this charger. Right now inside we've got a four kilowatt hour battery, uh, which was the smallest battery we could build that would run a 26 kilowatt peak draw. But this adapter will hold about 11 kilowatt hours inside of it. And right now we're about to build our 8.3 kilowatt hour battery. And are we talking an air cooled battery? Yes, it's, uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's not even forced air cool, so it, it's just ambient air. So I was able to run this motorcycle on a 95 degree Fahrenheit day at 85 miles an hour continuous for six miles, and the battery stayed at ambient air temperature. The average riding, what I've done on country roads with just a four kilowatt hour battery, I'm able to reliably get 30 miles out of it. And that's peaking at 75 miles an hour and averaging about 45. Now the 8.3 kilowatt hour battery that we spec for our standard small battery is going to give you double that. So you can expect about 60 miles of good, hard country riding out of a charge. And if you're just running around the city and you got it in low speed, so you're only going 45 for a max, you can expect about 100 miles out of that battery just commuting around town. The cells we're building with Samsung, uh, 21700s, and then we do all the work ourselves for the battery. So you're actually assembling the pack, and what about the battery management system? Tell me about it. Uh, right now we're using Thunderstruck's BMS. It's a spectacular system. It gives us direct insight into, right now, all 22 of the parallel cells in here. Uh, and by using Thunderstruck, uh, we also have that entire BMS tied into a gauge on the cluster. So while you're riding, you can see the voltage, the voltage drop, uh, and you can also even dial in here to each individual cell within the pack to see which is highest, which is lowest, and where the draw is the, is the heaviest. One of the products we decided to add is actually a uh, indicator cluster. So we're gonna be selling these indicator clusters with relays built in. So you'll be able to manage your turn signals, your brights, uh, brake lights, tails, etc. 
with uh, whether you're building an electric or a custom gas motorcycle with one single system. The hub motor comes with its own wires, right? And if you look down here at the base, you see we've got a three-phase motor, but we've got six wires. In order to get enough energy into the motor, we had to split the phases into two conductors. So what I've done is hand-formed all of this, and then right here I actually splice each phase from two to one. So we've got one gauge copper from here the rest of the way to the motor controller. So this is all hand spliced, handmade uh, conductors back to the motor hub drive. We also built a custom swing arm, custom clamping, and uh, we designed and built the brake uh, caliper mount on the other side as well. One of our goals in the next six to eight months is to get all these motor conductors inside the swing arm so they're not exposed. Yeah. So that, that could be six months, it could be a year before we get to that point with development, but a long-term goal is definitely to bury all the conductors so they're completely protected. Now for an early customer, you know, you, you're basically a beta customer is what you got right now. Yes. Maybe you'd even consider them an alpha customer. Um, do you see producing a bike basically like this, or do you see any refinements for your for customers one through five? Yeah. So yes, yeah, so we've already learned a number of things from this adapter and, a, and from this build and applied them to the next one. Uh, we've also found some hardware that we weren't happy with that we want to upgrade for the next uh, level of stuff. However, I am confident in the this build that I'm comfortable letting Bill ride it and, and a number of other people. Um, that, it's, it's safe. It's definitely safe. The sweet spot on these motorcycles is right around $16,000. That's where we're able to give you the 15 kilowatt hub motor and an eight kilowatt hour battery to go with it. So this I set up to be the lightest bike that I could possibly build. Right. But, this is intended so that each of these gussets is a mounting point for bodywork. There's a couple approaches that we've already developed. One is instead of a single cover plate, you would have a piece of bodywork that creates the entire look and it's held in place by the same four mounting points. We've also developed uh, hooks up front that are built in so that we can attach bodywork to there to hook around and give a nice nose. And of course, you know, d depending on where your budget goes, we can build bodywork that would emulate the old tank, that would give you any of the other looks and feels that you want to the adapter. And I do think that that's one of our strengths is we can build to your aesthetic and your look. One of the coolest tricks about Shandoka's motorcycles is our bikes are already street legal. We're using motorcycles with existing VIN numbers that are already in the federal system. So this is still technically a 1983 Yamaha XS400. According to the state of North Carolina, its tax value is only $400. And that's what I pay the tax value on the plate for. But because we didn't cut the frame, we haven't triggered any federal oversight that makes us do any additional work. So every bike that we build with this concept, you can go straight to the DMV and get it registered. And you don't have any issues with your insurance company either because it's already a bike that's in the system. And that's where a lot of challenges come with newer, brand new electric motorcycles is they have to get to volume, but they also have to get past the DMV and the NHTSA requirements for road safety and inspections. So Ernest, tell me what made you decide to to uh, start this venture? Well, I had been doing uh, hydrogen fuel since 1999. And in 2006 or so, started having doubts about hydrogen's future from a technological standpoint. And that's about the time that I had the opportunity to test drive a Tesla Roadster. Uh, so that opened my eyes up to battery's potential. And then one day I was trying to get that motorcycle that you're on to operate, and I could not get the carburetor to stay tuned or anything. And I sat back from the other side of the garage and said, wait, I can make that thing electric. And that's how I got here. That first version, how many years ago was that? So the original idea was 2010, about the time that the Zero uh, was introducing their first bikes. 
And I did all the calculations and figured out I just really couldn't build a motorcycle I was happy with, with the technology then. So it, it uh, stayed a secret. I did all the patent work, which took you know, a year and a half or so to write the patent. And then it took, from the time I filed it, it took four years for the patent to be awarded. But it's now awarded for the U.S. And it's about to be issued for India and Brazil as well. And tell me a little bit about the patent. What, what makes your particular take on all this unique that you were granted a patent? And what, what, what's it prevent others from doing that you hold the rights to? The patent protects Shandoka's design where we replace the engine with a structural adapter. So in any other motorcycle that has that architecture, whether it's these Yamahas, or Kawasaki Ninja 250 or 650 or a number of other motorcycles. It's that structural adapter that is protected. You go ahead and you meet somebody who's kind of interested in converting a gasoline motorcycle to EV. What's the pitch? The thing that really sets Shandoka apart is that we built in, from the very beginning, the concept of upgradability, specifically for the battery. Uh, the battery is the thing that's going to change the quickest in, in motorcycle technology now. And in my mind and, and with our philosophy, you shouldn't have to get an entirely new motorcycle just to get the latest battery technology. Now, for people that might be worried about, you know, if you guys are going to be around in five years, um, how do you feel as far as, you know, your financial situation, your ability to make it a going concern? Well, there's, there's two answers to that, right? One is, unlike a lot of other manufacturers of electric motorcycles, we don't have to be profitable over 10,000 units as long as we're making money on each unit. The other aspect is that we've designed these motorcycles so that if Shandoka is not around in five years, you can still update your system. You can still bring this up to a modern tech. Five years from now, we're going to be using batteries that we can hardly envision right now. But the process of changing the battery pack is what takes about 20 minutes. Obviously, it, it takes, you know, a couple of hours to build a pack or a couple of days, depending on your method, right? The process of changing the battery in the motorcycle is only about 20 minutes long. So by building at a 72 volt nominal pack we're able to use off-the-shelf controllers and motors etc so for somebody that wanted to buy one of these what's the process so we would would take their build deposit and get started on uh, ordering components if we don't have them in stock so right now i've got one more round of the 15 kilowatt motor and control systems that's in stock and if I need more, it's about a 45-day turnaround time to get through, get them right now. Typical build time right now is about three to four months to get one built from scratch. And I, I do have a few adapters and things that are already made that it saves on our, our development time. But it's more about getting all the details right. So by the time we get to April of 2024, we'll be telling you your spot in line as opposed to we're building it right away. So out the door with everything, North Carolina tax, everything, what would somebody be looking at for the Mac Daddy? Well, to pack it full, you're, you're going to be pushing about twenty three grand. That includes a lot of custom fabrication, and generally when you're going to that level of bike, you want some special features that are your own. The smallest build that we really think is, is what people would want to ride is still around 14 to 16 grand. And we can do a, a commuter level Ninja 250 for 13 out the door with, lot, with a couple of bells and whistles. I can personally say after riding the Shandoka that it felt great with brisk acceleration, excellent balance and competent braking. If you'd like to learn more about Shandoka electric motorcycles, visit the website linked in the description field. Hey, if you have enjoyed this episode of EV Rider, please give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can continue to bring you more adventures in EV motoring. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.